Okay, so welcome back. We're in the same notebook that we uh, we use to calculate our numerical response here. Uh, but now we just want to continue on. And very briefly, this isn't going to take us very long at all. Very briefly, we're just going to plot this equation and compare it to this response here, right? This was our numerical response. Now, again, I keep coming back to uh, things that uh, I, guess, I guess I'm assuming that you know or that you're familiar with, but things that we have essentially covered in, um, in my Fundamentals of Structural Dynamics course. So, so if you've if you've studied dynamics previously, you've taken that course, you are going to be very familiar with this equation. You might recognize this guy. This is the equation for the steady state response of a single degree of freedom system to harmonic loading. Okay, this is one part of the full response equation. The full response equation has a transient component in it as well. Now, I'm not going to worry about the transient component because I'm just using this as a little validation exercise. So I'll just plot the steady state component here. Okay, so in order to, to use this equation, the, the first thing that we've got to calculate is this beta parameter. Now beta is the frequency ratio. So that's the ratio of the harmonic forcing frequency to the natural frequency of our system or the damped natural frequency in our case here. So that's the first thing that we're going to calculate. So we'll just say that beta is equal to whatever the forcing frequency was divided by the damped natural frequency of our system. And we're also going to want the stiffness of our system because we've got the stiffness in here. So the stiffness is m times omega d squared. So let's say m times omega d squared. Okay, excellent. And now we're pretty much ready to calculate this equation. Now I'm going to break it up into, um, because I I'm usually make mistakes when I try and type out long equations like this. So I'm going to break it up into this part, which I'm just going to call O, so I'll define that first, um, because essentially it's just a constant. There's nothing varying in there as a function of time. And then I'm going to define or multiply O, this bit, by this bit here. Okay, right. So let me, in fact, let me just put in a couple of notes here as I go. All right, so just using, uh, using this expression here, I'm defining O as P over K times 1 over 1 minus beta squared all to be squared plus two xi beta. And again, remember xi is, is globally defined as is P and K. All right, we can then add that. So we can say, we can define response. We'll call it response CF for closed form. Uh, and that's gonna be equal to the O that we just defined times all of this, right? So one minus beta squared times the sine of omega f times time, right? So omega f, remember, this is the forcing frequency. The steady state response is an oscillation at the forcing frequency, whereas the transient response, which we're not plotting here, is uh, at the natural frequency of the system. So that's why we're using omega f here for the steady state response. Um, minus two times xi times beta times the cosine of omega f times t. Okay, so now we can pretty much go ahead and plot that guy. So uh, again, setting up a set of axes in the usual way. Now I'm plotting two things onto this. The first thing I'm plotting is my Duhamel integral response, my numerical response. So we'll say time versus response. And let's give it a label. We'll say the label is equal to just a simple string, Duhamel. Then we're gonna plot another line. So we're gonna plot time versus response CF. And we'll give that a label, another string, and we'll just say that's equal to closed form. And then we'll do the usual housekeeping. Okay, let's execute that, see what we get. So what, think about what we should get first of all, right? So we're going to obviously get this again. We've already plotted, we're plotting that again, essentially. And then we're going to plot a steady state response. So they're not going to agree, agree at the start because again, the Duhamel integral response is the full response, right? The actual response. So they won't agree at the start where we've got the transient response um, being the difference between them. Um, but they will, we should see the two responses converge, the closed form response and the Duhamel response after the, the transient dies away. And so sort of around about here, they should agree perfectly, but they won't agree at the start. So let's see if that is what we get. And it is what we get. Okay, excellent. So you can see the closed form response here is the same right from t equal to zero because we haven't, you know, we've not plotted the transient component. But you can see 
As soon as the transient dies away, and remember the, the Duhamel integral has the transient baked into it, as soon as that transient decays away, and again that decay is governed by the damping in the system, the two responses agree perfectly. Right? So what does this tell us? This tells us, this tells us that this bit of code that we wrote here is a correct implementation of these equations, right? Okay, well, I mean, it tells us it tells us that these equations are correct, um, but then it tells us the, the bit where we are likely to make more mistakes is when we're actually implementing it in code. And so this validation exercise tells us that, okay, we can have confidence in this code because it's giving us a, a response that agrees with, a response that agrees with the response we know to be true, like we know this is a valid equation. Okay, excellent. And that means we can move forward from this point. We've, we've essentially, you know, in terms of understanding the Duhamel integral, we're there, we've done it, right? If, if you're only interested in how do I use the Duhamel integral, you're done. Um, this is it. But now what we can do, now that we have this tool at our disposal, we can go ahead and we can start applying it to much more interesting cases, much more interesting scenarios. And that's what we're going to go and do from this point forward. We're going to look at, uh, in the next lecture, how do you model the force generated by a pedestrian as they walk? And then we're going to simulate the response of, the, let's say, our bridge to a pedestrian walking across that bridge. And then we're going to expand even further, still leaning heavily on the Duhamel integral, still using the Duhamel integral to calculate the response. We're going to simulate the response of the same bridge to a whole load of pedestrians, right? A, a, a group of pedestrians, a crowd of pedestrians walking across it. So again, fundamentals of Duhamel integral, we're done. We understand it. We've implemented it analytically and numerically. From here on, it's about taking it for a test drive and using it to do something interesting. So we'll kick that discussion off in the next lecture.